Good evening. I'd like to call this meeting to order and I'll call for the adoption of the agendas and that'll be Councillor Sharon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Payon, that the Council adopt the agendas as published on November the 1st, 2018, and that any and all revisions published November the 6th, 2018. Thank you, Councillor. Are there any items for dis discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried. I'm into the Mayor's report. I would like to begin tonight by offering my compliments to everyone who ran a campaign in this, this year's election. Congrats. Uh, Mr. Matthew Butler, one of our midfielders, I believe here. he's not here. Uh, another Thorold resident, we have Luca Marcone, midfielder. Willem Zen Zenzik is not here. Um, we have Anthony Hayes from St. Catharines. <laughs> Defender and striker. We have our sweeper uh, from St. Catharines, Mitch Dimitro. From Welland, one of our strikers, Simon Romero. <laughs> Another Thorold resident, we have uh, Owen Timmins. Another Thorold resident, we have uh, Marco De Felice. <laughs> Hunter Howell is not with us this evening. Um, <coughs> another Thorold resident uh, is uh, Alexander Santos Gonzalez. And that's it. Uh, that's that's fine. Yep. Thank you. Danny Continelli's not here today. Double up, guys. More in the middle. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah, sure. Over here, guys.
they take these reflections? Oh, did you have six guys? Yeah. I don't know his name. How many guys in the court? Yeah, I think six. Six? Six in the coaches, right? Good work. Excellent. <laughs> Saying uh, declaration of interest. No, I did. You did? Okay. I did. Yeah. I No, you didn't. Okay. Okay, counselors, are, are there any conflicts of interest? Seeing none, I'll, pro I'll proceed. There are no presentations tonight. Motions for support, Town of Pelham, Niagara Regional Conservation Authority Board. And that'll be presented by Councilor Longo. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moved by myself and seconded by Councilor Payone that the correspondence received from the Town of Pelham from its council meeting on October 15th, 2018, requesting that the region of Niagara establish a formal process for appointments to the Niagara Peninsula Cons Conservation Authority Board that would request and permit each of Niagara's local municipalities to publicly advertise and make recommendations for appointment of a qualified and independent citizen with appropriate skills and expertise to represent their respective municipalities to take effect following the 2018 municipal election or immediately should a vacancy on the NPCA board of directors occur, be received and supported. Are there any speakers to the motion? Councilor Longo. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, if I could speak first. Um, I, I commend the, the town of Pelham for this uh, motion put forward. I will support it. Um, Unfortunately, I'm not sure if there can be much of a change before appointments to this uh, term of the NPCA board come into effect, but uh, the city of Thorold throughout uh, the last number of years, um, the way it works, if people don't know, is our sitting regional representatives, being the mayor and our regional councillor, have declined this opportunity. Members of the council have declined it, and we have had, uh, the, we are the only municipality that has an independent citizen. So what I would like to uh, uh, throw out there uh, for anybody listening, anybody considering this, um, if our elected mayor and elected regional councillor and elected councillors all decline this opportunity, I hope a citizen or citizens will put their name forward so we can get a citizen who um, uh, has what they say here, a qualified and independent citizen with appropriate skills. Somebody who may have an environmental background, a conservation background, and maybe even a, um, a legal background. Somebody, uh, I, I guess, basically who's not an elected representative. I would, Thank throw, you, an, I would throw an engineer in there also, environmental engineer. Any other speakers? Uh, Councillor Sharon? Well, I agree 100% uh, with uh, what Councillor Longo just said. I just simply uh, want to uh, add the fact that this has been a, a troublesome area, uh, and that's a nice way to put it, uh, that needs to be fixed and needs to be fixed as quickly as possible. We are doing the right thing in this community, and we, uh, we, uh, uh, if we follow Council Longo's uh, suggestion, we are taking the right step as a community. We need to convince the rest of the region to do exactly the same thing, and it goes as, as far as Hamilton. This is an important thing to fix, and it needs to be fixed by doing exactly what this motion puts forward. So I strongly support this uh, uh, motion as put forward by the community, uh, other than ourselves, uh, to the community that is doing the right thing at, right now, and the rest of the region, and uh, that area of Hamilton that is part of the Niagara Peninsula Conservation Authority needs to look at us and do the right thing and follow what we're doing, what we're currently doing and what they should be doing. Thank you. Are there any other speakers? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? That's unanimous. Statements by Councillor. I think we have uh, 
Councillor Hanley, you have uh, two or three, I believe. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, a couple of quick ones. One is we've already resolved the issue I was going to bring up in regards to the plow that the city was looking at purchasing that we approved at the last meeting. And I was going to ask that we withdraw it because we have a collective bargaining agreement with Local 151 in regards to who was actually entitled in doing it. So we did not discuss that. That's already been resolved. I want to bring up in regards to GPS AVL vehicle tracking systems. Uh, back in 2016, council approved and we budget in 2015. That was the intent to install GPS AVL units in all operational vehicles and equipment. And I don't believe that we've been adhering to that, Mr. Mayor. And, and we should. I wanted to put a motion forward, if I could, that as of May of November 20th, 2018, all current vehicles within the municipality be equipped with GPS AVL and also subsequent vehicles be equipped with such upon purchase or receiving such vehicles. Presently, not all vehicles within the city of Thorold have GS GPS tracking systems, and it was as the intent of this council in 2016 that that be done, and it hasn't been adhered to, Mr. Mayor. So that's why I wish to put that motion forward. If I could, I don't know if I have a seconder or not. Is there a seconder? Councilor Longo. So my Mr. Okay. Mayor, then speakers, my- Speakers to the motion. Uh, Councilor Hanley, are you concluded? Pardon? You put the motion forward. You can, I, I'll uh, just read the speaking. motion and then how I want it worded. And we can have speakers okay. on it. Can we do that? Councillor uh, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, can we get an update from staff and let, let us know where it stands and how, how many vehicles do have it in there? And uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. 80% uh, of the vehicles are installed with GPS units, and we're looking at installing the fire department and the bylaw hopefully within the next couple of weeks, and that'll complete the entire fleet. But I still need to put a motion forward to, to have yeah, that. No, the motion's on the, sport, on the floor. We're speaking to the motion. Okay. Any other speakers? Councillor Whalen, again. Mr. Mayor, so just to clarify, in the next couple weeks, it'll all be done. Uh, it'll start. Uh, it'll start. In, we'll start installing the fire department, and hopefully within two weeks, we can have them all done. Okay, sir. But probably by the end of the month, we should have them all completed. So do we need the motion still? It's in it's on their way and it's almost there. Yeah. I don't think we need a motion because it's already in progress. Uh, just this, just uh, Mr. Santos, just be a little diligent and make uh, and uh, get it done as swiftly as you can. Okay, no problem. Okay. I think uh, council is all in agreement with that. No problem. Okay. Okay, that's, that covers that. Councillor Hanley, do you have another one? No, the third issue has already been resolved today also. So we've been okay. three for three today. Unbelievable. Huh. Must be a new term or something. No. <laughs> okay. We're into notices of motions. Are there any notices of motions? Seeing none, I'll move on to council committee and board meeting minutes. Uh, and it'll be Councillor Whalen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moved by myself, second by Councillor Ugolini, that the Council receive and file the members and the minutes of the Committee of Council and Local Boards as presented. Okay. Speakers to the motion? I'll call a question. All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried. Minutes to endorse recommendations, Councillor Ugolini. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Whalen, that the minutes of the September 5th, 2018 Parks, Trails and Recreation Committee meeting containing requests for staff to investigate the cost of installing a pickleball court on one of the tennis courts in South Confederation Park and present the findings to Council the cost of the conversion and operation of the Richmond Street Family Park bocce courts to two outdoor beach volleyball courts and possible sources of funding to be done in consultation with the Thorold Community Activities Group 
be received as presented. Speakers to the motion. Um, I'm going to ask our. Uh, we, don't, well, we don't have our treasurer here. <laughs> I think the best thing would be because you're going into the budget deliberations, you would move it to the budget deliberations. Would you consider that, Councillor? Yes, I would. Because if it goes to the budget deliberations, all you have to do is... Because they're going to make a report, and then we'll have the findings, and then it should go to budget. All right. So well, we can include that in. Add it. Can you, uh, we'll add it that it should go to the budget deliberations, the Absolutely. report that goes to the public yeah. budget deliberations. Okay. Is everybody clear of that? I'll call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried. Oh, resolved into general committee. I'll call the, this general committee meeting to order. Councilors, are there any declarations of pecuniary interest? Seeing none, I'll call it, I'll move it. We have no delegations. I'll call for reports to be brought, brought forward from consent. Motions to move reports on consent. Okay, uh, move it for all the consent items. Councilor Ugolini. All those in favor? I'm sorry, is there anything to be polled first? Nothing's to be polled. All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried. <clears throat> Moving to discussion reports. DF 2018-35, budget reallocation for service upgrades. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the recommendations of the report are that Council approve a budget reallocation of $1,250 from the Capital Budget City Hall Internet Service to the Capital Project Network Infrastructure Server Software Upgrades, and that two, that Council approve a budget reallocation of $1,950 from the Capital Project City Hall Internet Service to the Capital Project Mail Server Upgrade. That concludes the report. Thank you, Mr. Watson. Are there any items for discussion in this report? Seeing none, I'll call a question. All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried. Can I get a mover for the recommendation? Councilor, Councilor Hanley. So moved the All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried. PWC 2018 40, RFP award for food services, canteen service contract number 2018 25. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Mayor. Uh, the recommendation is that the request for proposals for food services, canteen service contract number 2018-25 be awarded to Crumpy Grandmas for a three-year term with an option for renewal. And secondly, that the mayor and clerk be authorized to ex execute the necessary agreement. That's the recommendation. Thank you. Move it for the report. Councilor Ugolini. So, so move the report. Speakers to the report. Councilor Ugolini. Is this, um, what's the timeline if we award this contract tonight when they could be up and running? Do you have any idea? And the arena is my concern because I've had a lot of complaints about us, you know, not being food services at the arena. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the concept would be as soon as it's awarded, I would suggest maybe a month, six weeks, uh, do the renovation. But in the meantime, uh, we can utilize the staff office that they currently use now for food service if we want to give it to, to uh, the minor hockey guys or whoever would like to use it for food services. We're opening that as an option for them to do so for free just as a secondary choice until we get this thing up and running. Thank you. Councilor Sharon. Yeah, I'm just, uh, uh, the question is simply, uh, is this because the, uh, uh, the groups that normally have done it in the past no longer wish to take over the canteen. It was a fundraiser for TAAA and, and for other organizations in different parts. And now we're not getting, uh, am I correct in saying we're not getting enough uh, from them as far as volunteers to, to run the canteen to say that it's always open? Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor, that is exactly the case. The, uh, the volunteer pool is running thin, if you will. Uh, even when they had the $200 discount for uh, the parents, if they contributed 
their time to the canteen. They just couldn't get enough staff for it. Um, so they're running short. Uh, just the profits they made, I think they made $1,000 last year. So the time and effort they put in just was not worth the hassle. So they opted to give it back to the city. I asked the question because my daughter was one of the people who did that. Uh, and uh, certainly it was a way to, for uh, people to, who uh, wish to defer some of the costs of, of playing a sport to be able to do that and, and throw money into the organizations themselves. It's a shame it has to go uh, into private hands, but I, I know it was tough for, for them to find somebody to come in and, and volunteer, and therefore uh, this sounds like the, the solution. You need to have the food services there, and uh, good, good luck to, uh, uh, who is it, Granny? Uh, or grumpy or which one? <laughs> grumpy grandmas. Are there any other speakers? Councillor Whalen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Question you through to Curtis. You made the uh, comment a few minutes ago about six, 46 weeks. Can you put the emphasis on we had a Christmas tournament coming up? That'd be about the six week timelines. It'd be nice to get that up in operation for people coming from out of town and visiting teams. So, whatever you can do, the, the sooner it'd be better. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor, that tournament actually between Christmas and New Year's moved to the end of January. Oh, it is now. Okay. But sooner or better either way because there are a lot of people looking forward to having it open again. Understood. Thank you. Any other speakers? Uh, I'll ask for a mover for the report. Councillor Whalen. So move the report. Speakers to the report. We just spoke. <laughs> okay. I'll call a question. All those in favor? Opposed, that's carried. PWC 2018-55, Marley's Game Postmortem. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So this is uh, information purposes. Uh, Council approved a general budget overrun of an upset limit of $58,000. This report identifies findings from the event at a total expense of $37,602.31, HST included. That concludes the report. Thank you, Mr. Dre. Can I get a mover for the report? Councilor Sharon. Speaker, speakers to the report. Councilor Longo. Yes, I need to ask a question because it seems like, from what I read, we're the proud owners of about 1,200 Marley tickets. Um, how are we going to sell those? Because it looks like we have the opportunity. And how much revenue should we generate from that sale? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. So that game that the deal was based on was October 20th at Coca-Cola Coliseum in Toronto. Um, at the conclusion of our game uh, here in Thorold, we put the tickets up on StubHub and did not get any offers. So you're saying we put them on StubHub? We did. And we didn't sell any? That's correct. So, okay, so we don't own any tickets. Okay, thank you. Any other speakers? I'll call a question. All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried. PWCS 2018-56 McAdam Park Improvements Budget Reallocation. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, it's me again. Um, recommendation is that Council approve a capital funds to be reallocated from the encumbrance reserve to offset the overrun on the McAdam Park washroom facility in the amount of $6,400 HST included. That concludes the report. Move for, move for the report, Councillor uh, uh, Hanley. Speakers to the report. I actually want to defer the report if I could give the reason why. Still defer, um, but because, uh, okay. I, I'm asking for a defer of the report. Basically, I've discussed with Curtis and Steve Santos. We need to sit down together. I believe that we can come back, and it isn't going to be this significant of a hit. Okay. If you say another word, you I won't allow the deferral. I'll call a question. There's no debating a, a deferral. Uh, so I'll call a question. All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried. PWCS 2018-59, Tender Award, Arena Parking Lot, Restoration Contract Number 2018-220. Mr. Dre, I believe. Hmm. 
It's Sean. <laughs> Mr. Dunsmore, is that yours? You want me to do that? <laughs> uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, it's recommended that Council approve a budget overrun of $3,730 to be funded from the Arena Building Reserve and that Council award the contract 2018-2020 Arena Parking Lot Restoration to Norjohn Contracting and Paving Limit in the amount of $70,230 plus HST and that the Mayor and Clerk be authorized to execute the necessary agreements. So concludes the report. Thank you, Mr. Dunsmore. Can I get a mover for the report? Councillor Ugolini. Are there any speakers to the report? Councillor Longo, Councillor Hanley. Uh, Councilor thank you, Mr. Ugolini. Mayor. Through you to uh, Mr. Dunsmore. Do you have a time frame for the uh, project? As soon as possible. Uh, next couple of weeks, it'll take them a couple of weeks to get locates and, and get mobilized, and then uh, they should be in and out. It should only take them about a week, week and a half to get done. A week and a half. And, and do we have a contingency plan for parking, or is it just going to be across the street at the... Uh, uh, it, it's only going to really affect a uh, couple parking spots, um, just up at the, um, whatever, the Ormond, or the Zambonian? front street side. Yeah, it, really, that's what we're doing, is we're replacing the asphalt around the Zamboni. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> I have Councillor Hanley, then Councillor Ugolini. No question, thank you. Okay, thank you. My question to answer to mine was on timelines, and he's answered that. Thank you. Any other speakers? I'll call a question. All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried. PWCS 2018-60 Office Chair Purchase. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the recommendation is that a budget reallocation of, for $361 plus HST for the purchase of an office chair be approved and funded from the Departmental Health and Safety Budget. That concludes the report. Thank you, Mr. Dre. Can I get a mover for the report? Councillor Longo? So move the report. Speakers to the report. Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried. PWCS 2018 61 Parking Restrictions on Ross Street. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, it's recommended that traffic, the traffic and parking bylaw. Uh, 150 2012 be amended to restrict parking on both sides of Ross Street and and to be approved at a future council meeting. So concludes the report. Thank you, Mr. Dunsmore. Can I get a move for the report? Councillor P. Allen. The report. Speakers to the report. Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Oh, go ahead. Thank you. Um, when I read through all the information that's there, there's a fair amount from uh, not only the report from staff, but uh, uh, the re various uh, points of view from the people who either live on the street or yes. nearby. Um, is there any plan uh, to take this street and make it into a regular street with sidewalks and with curves and uh, that type of thing. Certainly that's uh, what I read out of the uh, recommendations of the people who are there, and this is not a very big street. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, that's a slightly more difficult question than it appears on the surface because um, Thorold Ave uh, was constructed uh, in the late 90s, and it is a full urban cross-section, even though it's outside the urban boundary. Um, these two streets, Ross and then um, whatever the one is on the other Ham side, Ham Hamilton, uh, are both rural cross sections. So our normal policy, our official, our official plan would suggest that we wouldn't urbanize those streets. Um, but in this case, because Thorold Avenue exists, I think that, that it's probably the best approach is to actually urbanize those and, and put proper storm sewers and so forth down that road. So it would, it, it's going to appear in the 10-year forecast moving forward. Telling me that long term, it's going to happen. That's Short right. term, it, we're going to have no parking on the street. That's right. Yep. Okay, thank you. Councillor Hanley. Just one thing, I don't know if it's a clerical error, but in the report, 
in the last paragraph it says remove the parking on the north side of Bolton Avenue heading west to the first driveway I, yeah I think that was so, a, a typo or a, uh, a, a remnants of I an don't old know, report are we expecting this to be happening on Bolton Avenue then is uh, no. no no that was an old report okay thank you any other speakers Councillor Whalen thank you Mr. Mayor Mr. Mayor, hopefully in the, in the next term we can get the whole city analyze it. We got the next report has an identical problem again. So maybe going forward we can leave that with the next council to look at, uh, taking a look at all of the world and, and clarify and get something comparable. Because I'm sure this is a tough, cumbersome job bringing this up time after time after time. And so if we get something that will equate to everybody fixing the problem all the way around, I'm sure it would be greatly appreciated. Through you, Mr. Mayor. It's actually a, a, a policy that we're going to review during our transportation master plan. Uh, review and there's going to be public meetings associated with it. I will tell you if we include all the roads that are less than seven and a half meters to to proactively restrict the parking on, uh, it's going to be an interesting meeting when we decide to do that. <clears throat> Great idea and I wish the next council all the best with it. <laughs> <laughs> Any other speakers? Seeing none, I'll call a question. All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried. PWCS 2018-64, restrict, restricted parking on Cleveland Street and Metcalf Street. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, it's uh, recommended that Council approve the restriction of parking on the south side of Metcalf Street between Delaware and Queen Street and that council approved the restriction of parking on the east side of Cleveland Street from Linden Street to 90 meters north of Cleveland Street, and that the traffic bylaw 150-2012 be amended to recognize the restrictions in the above mentioned streets. So concludes the report. Thank you, Mr. Dunsmore. Can I get a mover for the report? Councilor Hanley. I'll move the report. Speakers to the report. Seeing none, I'll call a question. All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried. PDS 2018-30. Report regarding the lifting of a holding provision and the execution of the subdivision agreement for Artisan Ridge, Phase 1 subdivision file Number 2016-2014-01. Mr. Darbyson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The recommendations are that Council receive report PDS 2018-30, a report regarding the lifting of the holding provisions and the execution of subdivision agreement for Artisan Ridge Phase 1 subdivision. Uh, number two, that council approve the bylaw to remove the holding H provision on the subject lands from residential third density R37H zone and open space OS-11H zone to residential third density R3-7 zone and open space OS-11 zone. And number three, that council approve the bylaw authorizing the mayor and the clerk to execute the subdivision agreement between the city of Thorold and Stardust Estates Incorporated for the Artisan Ridge Phase 1 subdivision. So concludes the report. Thank you, Mr. Darbyson. Can I get a mover for the report? Councillor Sharon? Are there any speakers to the report? Seeing none, I'll call a question. All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried. PDS 2018-32, amendments to bylaw number 109-2017, residential rental licensing bylaw. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's recommended that council adopt bylaw number 107-2018, amending bylaw number 109-2017, the residential rental licensing bylaw, as set out in the attachment to the report. Thank you, Mr. S uh, Simpson. Can I get a mover for the report? Councilor Ugolini? Move the report. Speakers to the report. Councilor Longo. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to ask a few questions on this report. I understand we're trying to speed up the process here, um, and it sounds like a good thing. To the, at this point, I think we only have slightly more than 100 licensed properties, and we were told there's 1,000 out there. Um, I'm just wondering, 
do we expect this to accelerate the, uh, the rate at which we can now license properties? And how long do we think it's going to take until we get to the number 1,000? Through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, we do expect this change to expedite the issuance and processing of applications uh, significantly. Uh, we are currently in the process of compiling a list of unlicensed properties throughout the city, in which case, and developing a uh, procedure for further investigating these properties, as well as we are working on developing a communication plan with regards to the residential licensing bylaw um, that we hope to implement shortly uh, to hopefully bring in my, many more applications. Uh, thank you. So the communication plan is going to uh, basically ask people to comply. That's what we're looking for, I take it? Through you, Mr. Mary. Yes, we are going to be the communication plan uh, will be sending the message out there as to why this bylaw is a good thing, um, requesting that everyone comply and submit their applications. But we are working on developing an enforcement procedure as well where we'll be proactively going after unlicensed properties in the near future. Okay, so that's the tough question, and I'm going to ask it because people have been asking me. Um, so what are we going to do? We have people who... I know who have abided by it and they're upset because they feel they've been basically taken advantage of because they've done everything they need to do yet they know of others who haven't and nobody wants to snitch on people and nobody wants to see anybody punished but do we have do we have a fine do we have a standard set in place that people will be, will be made aware of Through you, Mr. Mayor, there are fines. There, we, there is a fine in place, um, and there will be future amendments coming to the bylaw as well, implementing uh, additional fines where officers will be able to issue tickets to non-conforming uh, properties. Okay, so again, I want to ask, these are tough questions, but what is the fine? What's the dollar amount? Because, because um, at this point, my understanding is the application calls for a $500 fee for two years. So do we have a suitable fine so that people comply, comply to the bylaw? Through you, Mr. Mayor, currently the uh, fine it is up to a maximum of $25,000. Uh, in the future, officers will be able to issue uh, tickets for up to five hundred dollars, uh, depending on which enforcement route we choose to take. Um, the short term or the short form wording was just approved for the ticket process through the province, um, so we're hoping to bring that amendment to the bylaw in the near future as well. Okay, and just one more question, if I may, Mr. Mayor. Um, I've I've had a lot of. Uh, I'm trying to remember what my last question is. Um, <laughs> I'll take a pass right now. Thank you. Are there any other speakers? Councilor Ugolini. For you, Mr. Mayor. Um, to the uh, um, chief building official, uh, two questions. Number one, what's our backlog? Now, we, my understanding, we had over 400 applications. Is that correct? So we have had applications greater than 100. It's just that we haven't inspected those properties yet. Am I correct? Through you, Mr. Mayor, that is correct. We do have uh, just over 400 applications that we've received. Um, less than 200 have actually been issued. Uh, there are a number of them that have been in the waits uh, being processed. This changed uh, before you tonight will hopefully allow us to expedite many of those applications. Through and. Uh, there are some that have been inspected uh, but have failed inspections and we're awaiting the owners of those properties to rectify the problems before we can issue them a license. And the other question I have is regards to, um, we're open as well to keep looking at tweaking this so that we can make it easier. So these changes don't mean it's cut in stone. We're still looking at further changes as far as if we see things that can make the process easier 
and roadblocks. Am I correct in that as well? Through you, Mr. Mayor, that is correct. We are currently reviewing the entire procedure, um, but this amendment I thought was quite important to bring forward to help expedite things, um, but we are continuing to review the procedure and the bylaw um, if there are any other amendments that we feel are necessary to help improve the process uh, we'll bring those forward and, it, and i want to thank you for the great work you've done up to this point so thank you any other speakers Councillor longo mr mayor i did remember my last question now and it was kind of on Councillor ugolini's line there i have a lot of uh, residents asking me they don't know where to go with concerns about the program and they they do tell me they have recommendations uh, not that they want to scrap the program it's how to make changes to make it uh, a better program who can I tell them to contact they're at a loss on who to talk to at City Hall through you mr. mayor I would recommend if they have recommendations for amendments to the bylaw they can contact myself by call, calling City Hall if they have uh, specific complaints regarding properties or the enforcement of the bylaw, they could speak to any bylaw officer in addition to myself. Right. It was more about uh, making recommendations or questioning uh, some parts of the bylaw. So uh, that's what I can do is have them call. And, and just a final question. I don't know if we want to open it all up, but uh, there, like I say, there are a lot of people who do have concerns and would there be op any uh, public consultation on making some changes to the bylaw? Uh, certainly not getting rid of the bylaw, but just making changes. Would there be an opportunity for a public forum, or we haven't thought of that yet? Through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, that is something that we could talk uh, with staff and with our CAO to determine whether that's a route that we wish to take. Any other speakers? Seeing none, I'll call a question. All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried. PDS 2018 34, tender award by bylaw enforcement vehicle. Tender award for a bylaw enforcement vehicle. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's recommended that Council approve the award of the purchase of a new vehicle for bylaw enforcement division in the amount of $27,385.65, inclusive of taxes, to Edler and Ford with an additional $1,200 to equip the vehicle with safety equipment. $25,000 of that purchase will be funded from the departmental capital budget, and $3,585.65 will be funded through a general budget overrun. It's also recommended that the mayor and clerk be authorized to execute the necessary agreement. Thank you, Mr. Simpson. Can I get a mover for the recommendation? Councillor Whalen? So moved. Question. Speakers to the recommendation? Councillor Sharon, did you have your hand up? I was, but I got fast enough to move. I caught you, though. I caught you. Councillor Whalen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Quick question to, uh, to staff. Did it go up to tender? Again, we see one vehicle here. Was it two? Just heading into text. And does it show somewhere the type of the vehicle? Am I missing that also? Through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, there were two submissions that were received, both for the exact same vehicle, being a Ford Escape SE. Um, Ed Learn Ford was the lower of the two submissions. So we're going back to another SUV. I think the, we have a truck and a Hyundai right now. So. You, are you advising to go back to an, an SUV? Just the truck seemed to be make sense because you put uh, whatever in the back of it. Through they Mr. needed Mayor. something bigger to pick up all the loose election signs. <laughs> that's, that's what I meant the truck. <laughs> uh, 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 Through you, Mr. Mayor, the reason uh, we, I did not wish to go with a pickup truck is I didn't see the need for an additional vehicle of that size. Uh, this new vehicle will be used a lot for parking enforcement and uh, getting a large vehicle such as a full-size pickup truck into 
uh, maneuvering around downtown could be an issue, but I also wanted to make sure that there's a vehicle that could be used uh, well in the winter time with all wheel drive as the officers are out there regularly with the plows in the winter as well. Sounds good, thank you. Are there any other speakers? I apologize, Mr. Simpson, I was a little sarcastic there. Anyways, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried. CC 2018-47, replacement of counselors' IT devices. That's you, Joanne. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The, re the recommendation is that council approve a general budget overrun of up to 1,465 to facilitate the need to replace counselor IT devices for the 2018-2022 council term. That concludes the report. Thank you. Ms. Goulet, uh, can I get a mover for the report? Councillor Hanley, Someone speakers the to the report <laughs> for the report. Someone the report, Mr. Mayor. Speakers to the report, Mr. Oh, Hanley, Councillor Hanley. <laughs> okay, you're going to like what you're getting. Uh, Councillor Pion, you were, do you want to speak to it? No other speakers, so I'll call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried. CC 2018 48, disposal of corporate assets, counselor iPads. Two for 50 bucks. <laughs> The recommendation of the, of the report is that Section 9, disposable of surplus or obsolete assets of the procurement policy be waived to provide counselors the opportunity to purchase their current iPad 2 device should they desire at a cost of $25 plus HST. Two for 50. Two for 45. Can I get a mover for the recommendation? Councilor Ugolini. Speakers to the report. Seeing none, I'll call a question. All those in favor? Opposed, that's carried. FES 2018-17, old aerial number one be removed to reserve status. Chief Dixon. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The recommendation is that council approve the current aerial one be kept and placed into reserve status once the new aerial arrives. When aerial number one is placed into reserve status, it will not be replaced. Secondly, that the vehicle is finally removed from service to disposal options will be brought to council in another report. So concludes the report, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dixon. Can I get a mover for the report? Councilor Ugolini. Speakers to the report. Councilor Hanley. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, for the third meeting, again, what the request of council has been, hasn't been. Uh, we did get an appraisal of the building. We had asked, the first time I had asked for the pros and cons, the second time I had asked for the pros and cons. This report is basically identical to the report that we received at the previous council meeting on October uh, the 2nd uh, meeting date. The only thing that had changed is the last paragraph, the cost associated with maintaining the old aerial. We still haven't got the information that we've been questioning for, the pros and cons of keeping this piece of equipment. And again, I would state to council that I'll bring forward more information again today in, in that, and I'm wanting to put a motion forward, I will, at the end, that we have this aerial one, put other service on arrival of the new aerial, and put up for sale by public auction. Mr. Mayor, if I can, the public ser fire service is unique compared with other emergency services in that fire apparatus vehicles are not continuously in use. However, when in use, the apparatus is subject to considerable mechanical stress due to the nature of the function. The stress does not normally manifest itself on the exterior of the equipment. It is effectively masked in most departments by a higher standard of aesthetic care and maintenance. Lack of replacement parts further complicates long-term use of apparatus. Truck and pump manufacturers maintain a parts inventory for each model year for finite time. After that period, Obtaining necessary parts may be difficult. These part shortages are particularly acute with fire apparatus due to the narrow market of these devices. Mr. Mayor, this is from the fire underwriters. Fire apparatus should respond to first alarms for the first 15 years of service. During this period, it has been recently been shown that apparatus effectively responds and performs as designed without a failure at least 95% of the time. 
For the next five years, it should be held in reserve. That's up to 20 years, Mr. Mayor. And after that, it says, in reserve status for use at major fires are used as temporary replacement for other service first line apparatus. Apparatuses should be retired from service at 20 years of age. Present practice indicates the recommended service periods and protocols are usually followed by the first purchaser. However, at the end of that period, the operator is either traded in on new apparatus, which you're doing, and at this juncture, the unit may have one or more faults which prelude effective use of emergency services. Mr. Mayor, insurance grading recognition may be extended for a limited period of time if we receive documentation verifying that the apparatus has successfully passed the specific test. We have not received that information, Mr. Mayor, and I'll go on. In the fire underwriter study, it says exceptions to the age status may be considered in a small to medium-sized communities and rural centers conditionally when apparatus condition is acceptable and apparatus successfully passes required testing. On that note, Mr. Mayor, acceptance tests consist of 60-minute capacity and 30-minute pressure tests because he stated that it was going in reserve to being used. Uh, t service tests consist of 20-minute capacity tests and 10-minute pressure tests in addition to other listed tests. Note 4. Apparatus exceeding 20 years of age may not be considered to be eligible for insurance grading purposes regardless of testing. And because it was mentioned that we wanted to be put in reserve, the application was to be made in writing to the Fire Underwriter Survey for an extension of the grade able life of the apparatus. The Chief has stated it could be used for training too. So the intent of this document, which is from the Fire Underwriter, is to ensure that all user modified fire apparatus equipped with a pump that are used for tanker service essentially meet the requirements of Underwriters Laboratories of Canada's ULC standard for automobile firefighting apparatus S51504 of subsequent current editions of the standard. Full adherence with the following specified tests is recommended when purchasing a used apparatus. Well, now that we're putting for your reserve, the same applies to this, Mr. Mayor. It needs to have a weight test, a load balance test, a road test. From a standing start, the operator shall attain a true speed of 55 kilometers, 35 miles an hour, within 25 seconds for pumpers carrying up to 3,150 liters of 700 gallons of water. There has to be a braking test. There has to be a hydrotastic test. There has to be a priming and suction capability test, a vacuum test, a suction capability test, a pump performance cap capacity test, a pressure test, numerous other things, Mr. Mayor. This fire truck is antiqu antiquated. It's 25 years old, and right from the underwriter survey, which a lot of times the fire department goes by, it states right here that after 20 years, that it should be retired from service. I'm not about to put myself or any of my volunteer firefighters in this city in the jeopardy of liability going down the QEW like they have already with the aerial, driving a full-fledged aerial down the QEW. Because another point, if this aerial was of such prime condition as far as mechanical issues, then why didn't we go out and replace just the ladder equipment on it for $350,000 to $450,000 instead of spending $1.3 million on a truck? This truck is antiquated. It's had its lifetime. This is the third time it's come forward. And this is the third time my questions and council requests have not been uh, as, or complimented to. We've gotten nothing. No pros and cons that we asked for. Councilor, it's the same for it three do you, times. Do you want to? Motion reject, forward. Do you to, want to reject the report? Reject the report and put a motion forward that we have area one be put out of service permanently on the arrival of the new area and be put up for public auction. That's your motion. That's my motion. First, the first thing you have to do is reject the report. Then you come up with your, your motion to, uh, to dispose of the existing area. So, the two motions there. We have to re reject the existing report. That's your first motion. To reject the first re to reject the report as presented here at Council FES 2018-17. Councilor Pion. So just to clarify, he's not making a motion to reject. He's Council can say no to the first motion. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He's, it's not a second motion. It's just. And then come out. Uh, uh, Council can reject the report. Council has the choice to reject the report, a, but there isn't a, a motion, motion to reject the report. I'm just clarifying. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, motion on the floor is to reject the report. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. 
That's the motion. A question, just so I know what I'm voting on. If we reject the report, the report. then where are we? Done. Are we in just sitting then, here then there's with another motion nothing to vote on from that point on? motion on the floor to, to basically dispose of the piece of the apparatus. He wants to put a motion to an antique. Yeah. I know, but if you reject the, he wants to put his own separate motion Mm -hmm. Yeah, there based on what? The first time ever we had a piece of Toledo, he wanted to for training purposes. I mean, it, obviously the, the original motion comes based upon the recommendation of the fire chief. We're rejecting the report, number one. Then you're and bringing a motion. If, they, if it's rejected, then that's it. I mean, where do we? How, how do we go to the next step? Well, then uh, there's a. <laughs> A motion on the floor yep. to dispose of the apparatus. Okay. All right. This here comes the confusion. Just for, <laughs> for clarification again, I thought I, I said You're it the first time. Up. We have Take a motion a before us. Someone moved to just vote on the moved yeah, motion. Yeah, just like it. we have Look. a motion before us. If we say no to this motion, then by default, we're going to obviously we're not just going to keep it to rust. Either we vote yes to this motion or we sell it at an auction. No, okay. I'll put the motion. Right? And okay. so if we vote no to this motion, then Councillor Hanley, I believe, wants to put forward okay, I'll, I'll agree a second you. motion to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So I, I don't we'll think we should overly motion, complicate it. Vote on it. If it's rejected, you've got to come back and with another motion. Councillor Longo. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to ask uh, the Chief a question, if I may. Um, Chief, if we dispose of this vehicle, will we need to replace it with another vehicle? We just did. No, because there's a purpose for it in the report. I just want to know, if we dispose of this vehicle, will we need to purchase another vehicle for the fire services? <clears throat> Through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, thank you for the question because it kind of it speaks to it in the report, and I'm glad you bring it forward. Thorold Fire is in a unique situation. We don't have a reserve truck, and unfortunately, currently, we've gone through an accident where we've had one truck out of service for an extended period of time, so that actually depletes our frontline vehicles. We don't have a full complement of frontline vehicles because we don't even have a replacement vehicle to put in that spot if there's an accident, if it's out of service for mechanical. That was the intention of this aerial truck. So do we need to, re is it a mandatory truck to be replaced? No, but operationally, we're going through a tough time right now with a shortage of trucks. This would alleviate that situation in those small times that it does happen. And from the report, it has passed all of the safety requirements. It's not an unsafe vehicle. Let's not lose sight of the fact that it's currently in service. And I, as the fire chief, and along with the rest of the members of council, would not risk their safety of anyone if I felt it was unsafe for them to be using, they wouldn't be using it now. So, uh, yeah, I think it serves a purpose. That's strictly why I have it in there. And the pros and cons are in the report. The pros are to keep it because we are short of frontline vehicles right now. Currently, right now, we're short of a vehicle at Station 3. And this would help alleviate that type of problem. So before we bought the new aerial, we were short two vehicles then? We weren't, we, sorry, no, we weren't sure at that point, no, sure. but we had an accident where we took a vehicle out of service for two months. That put us into a hole where we were short. But we do have that vehicle back now? Mm, shortly. Shortly. Within a week's time, yes. But if there's another accident, there is no vehicle to supplement again. Even when vehicles are out of service for mechanical purposes, just doing their annual testing, getting fixed or out of the municipality for training, again, we are short frontline vehicles in the city. Mr. Mayor? I, could. I have Councilor Hanley, then I have Councilor Pion. I do believe we have 14 pieces of apparatus in this municipality, plus we have 11 other municipalities surrounding us. Uh, that's why they call it mutual aid. We've used it in the past, other have used it in the past, the chances of us getting in that predicament and that stuff where we don't have enough fire equipment in this municipality to service our needs. We got four fire stations. We've never had a fire that I can imagine in the city of Thorold. We've used up every 
piece of equipment in this city and where we've had to call equipment from outside. We've never in the past ever kept an antiquated piece of equipment, 25 years old. I, any person in any department within the city, if you ask them if they would have needed another vehicle, if they got rid of one, they're all gonna say yes. No one's ever gonna say no. Why would you? You wanna make it look like you need more, not less. It's a piece of equipment we do not need. The questions asked by this council have not been addressed. We do not need the piece of equipment. It's gonna sit in station four. And if it has met all the tests and that stuff, do we need to require it? I believe this machine has met its full life cycle. And as I mentioned before, if it's still that good of a piece of equipment, then why didn't we just replace the ladder on it for three hundred and fifty to four hundred and fifty thousand dollars and save the taxpayers nine hundred thousand dollars and not purchase a one point three million dollar piece of equipment? Because we go back when we had the discussion in regards to purchasing that equipment, it was basically told it lived out its lifetime, it was of no use. And then we come back with a report saying now it is useful to us after we approved the one point three million dollar purchase of a new one. It's antiquated. It's time, it's seen its lifestyle. We got a brand new aerial, we paid $1.3 million on it. Let's use this to train our firefighters and show them how to use an aerial. Not one that's 25 years old. Think about it, my fellow counselors. Come on. We're uh, gonna start keeping, we should have an antique garage in the city. I have Councillor Peon and Councillor Scher. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have a few questions here. Um, First of all, I, I wish we had put everything into the original report for buying the $1.3 million aerial. If at that time there had been in the report that we're purchasing a new aerial and keeping the old one for training, then it would have all been in one place and we could have thought of it all at one go. Uh, but it is kind of surprising to be asked to buy a $1.3 million aerial. My thinking at the time, I voted yes for it, thinking that the old aerial was no longer useful and we, we weren't going to keep it. And then it was kind of a surprise to get a second report saying we're going to be keeping it. My questions are the following. Since it's a 25 year old aerial, what is the estimate of the annual maintenance cost for it through you to our fire chief? Well, testing alone without any issues is about uh, $1,200. If there's issues, uh, again, if there's major mechanical issues, the report speaks to it, then it's time to dispose of it, absolutely. But uh, just the testing of it, like he did indicate, some of the pump testing that is required and it's mandatory, it did pass it this year, passed it within the last two weeks, as did all the vehicles in the fleet. Um, but that's about $1,200 plus the insurance cost. Okay, um, it's my understanding that one of the main reasons for keeping this is to use it for training. Well, for reserve purpose and for training, yes, we have, uh, we're very happy. We're pushing hard, very hard to get our recruit numbers up. And one of the times that uh, we can use the truck in our own municipality or in other places is to train the recruits. It's, uh, it's a vehicle that will ser serve that purpose for sure. We're not going to have to take one of our frontline trucks out of service as we train the recruits. It's not the saying that we're not going to train the recruits on the actual trucks that are there, but it's good for them to have their own truck to take ownership to take pride in going over it, practice, and, and having a familiar routine, and that's uh, important for them. Yeah, the second thing you said is one of the reasons I'm asking, because I'm trying to understand this. I'm not an expert on firefighting, but I'm trying to understand, given that it's a 25-year difference between the new aerial and the old one, uh, I'm just wondering how training on the old aerial properly prepares a firefighter to use the new aerial. Shouldn't they be training on the new aerial? Some is the there enough of a difference that training well, on the old one well, the new one is definitely uh, uh, totally different than the uh, than the That's my point. Yeah. But some of the same basic skills are not, not going to change. How they pull the hose off the truck, how they load it back onto the truck okay. is identical, 100% identical. And that's an ideal situation for them to use that old truck just to constantly train and get familiar with their skills, the basic skills. They're not going to be an operator because there's no sense training on that truck and to use another one. But the basic skills, absolutely. Pulling the hoses, loading the hose, all those things are basic no matter what truck. Okay, so, so it'll be used for training and potentially to fight a fire as well. There is that potential. Right now it's certified for the pump and uh, that was a big test. It passed as the councillor okay. alluded to 
and as I said earlier, right now, at this exact moment, we are short one frontline truck. So at this point, I have to ask the same question that Councillor Hanley asked. If it's past the safety, if we only so far paying 1200 a year to check and there isn't any major repair yet, and it, it's still usable to fight a fire, why buy the $1.3 million truck right now? Why not wait until the, this truck is no longer usable and, and then replace it at that time? Well, the, the, key, the key thing, and I say it respectfully, it's in the report. I try to explain to everyone, and I'm not trying to pull a fast one by anyone in the council here. We're not trying to add to the fleet. We're not trying to do anything. I'm not trying to put it in as a frontline truck running all the calls that the new aerial would run. This is an emergency situation. It's a reserve. It's a backup for those extreme cases. So in case of the Port Robinson that doesn't have a truck in there right now, it, could, it would run if it was needed and required. But it's not going to run all the steady, normal, daily frontline calls that the current area would run. It has reached its limit. There's no doubt about that. But it would be used as a backup. Sorry yep. to interrupt. Yep, um, it could be used as a... We've never had a backup before. Actually, every, every year up until last year, we've had a backup. We'd have. Okay. Yeah. So last year, December, or December 2017, we lost our last backup. Pump 2A was taken out of okay. service. So that was the last time. We are in desperate need of a reserve truck. And speaking to what Councilor Hanley said, absolutely. There's a lot of vehicles in the fleet, and unfortunately I've inherited, and so is the municipality in the city of Thorold, that are older than 20 years. We're dealing with a truck that's being replaced next year, hopefully, that's from 1986. There's a need to replace these, and it's unfortunate that this problem's been festering, and we do need this truck. Uh, that's all my question. Okay, I got Councillor Sharon, and then Councillor Hanley. Okay, um, like uh, Councillor Fiona, I have a few questions here. Um, if, if we were to get rid of the truck, uh, where, where do you get rid of it? Is there, it says here that it's worth $17,686. Is that, is that because somebody's out there to buy it for that price? Or do we actually have to take it to auction to sell it? Um, so uh, their request from council was to get a value of the truck. So I had it appraised by a professional appraiser for fire trucks. That was the appraised value. We would follow the, uh, the um, disposal policy, which would be listing it on a uh, government auction website, as we have with other apparatus. Just to be honest, it doesn't usually fetch that high of a price, but for some people, it's a, a nice truck to have that some people want, so there's potential. So this is a, a educated guess on the value of the truck, but you have no idea exactly what it's going to bring? That's correct. Okay. Uh, first of all, the old aerial truck, uh, is, is that useful as an aerial truck? Uh, currently, it is, up until the end of this year, yep. Will it be when, uh, if you were to keep it uh, and we were not to sell it, would it be used as an aerial truck? Uh, no, the latter wouldn't be used, but the truck itself would still be in use. The truck so has passed its pump test and other tests, it just hasn't passed the latter. So test. what's the truck used for? As a, just as a pumper? Strictly as a pumper and to carry personnel and equipment. Okay. Um, so has it been, uh, the testing that's been done on the truck to, uh, over the last little while? Within the last two weeks, every truck was tested, including that truck, and it has passed its test for the pump. So although it's almost 26 years old, it passed the test that it could be used as a pumper? That is correct. Do you intend to use it as an active pumper? To be honest with you, at a fire scene, probably not, never. At a training scenario, yes. When you do the training, where do we go for training now? I, I've heard that St. Catharines is not available to us anymore. Correct, St. Catharines has been out of service for about three years now. So uh, we actually go to Fort Erie. We have an agreement with them. We were there last Saturday. We're going there again this Saturday. That's the end of this year, but that's the closest facility that we've negotiated with. We do also use uh, Station 4. They have a training ground there. So if you take people down to train in Fort Erie, it's on that truck? That's correct. They went down there last week, and they'll be going again this Saturday. And therefore, leaving all the other trucks that are here available if something has to be, if they have to fight some kind of fire? Yes, absolutely. We're short trucks, so we don't take too many down there right now. 
Uh, and if it goes, my last question here, what do we use for training? We'll use existing apparatus that's currently protecting the city of uh, Thorold residents, but it just may be unavailable. Okay, thank you. Councillor Hanley. The odds of being unavailable, I'll mention that, is I think they get 1.2 calls per day in a week. You know, if we want to go on how many calls and we get into the statistics part of it, the bottom line is it's an antiquated piece of equipment. We don't need it. We got 14 other pieces of equipment in this municipality that they can train on. They can train on newer equipment. Yes, we do have older equipment in this town. Does that mean that every time now we retire a fire truck or buy a new pumper, we're going to keep the old one? I think not. I think myself personally, we don't need it. It's been stated. We got other equipment in this city. We got 14 pumps. The volunteer firefighter has been training on the existing equipment for 60 years, 70 years, without having to train on antiquated equipment. And we shouldn't be allowed to, and I don't want to put myself in a position where, as you read it, about stress tests and whatnot happening and driving that truck up and down the QEW. We've only been doing this year. As stated, that fire tower has been out of service for years. We haven't been going down to that fire tower until this year. I imagine we have been, and we've been getting there okay without using an aerial truck or using the van, which the city does have, or a rescue vehicle. So regardless, either vehicle you take, you're going to have a vehicle out of service if that's what you're looking at of using it as a reserve vehicle. So to me personally, it's a spend upon his last time and if the rest of the council wishes to keep it, so be it, I'll live with the decision. Councillor Whalen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Question also, uh, how many pumpers, without this being used as a reserve, how many pumpers do we have in the fleet? Uh, the city of uh, Thorold has four fire stations, four pumpers, and we have one aerial that is capable of pumping as well. So that being the case, we bring a new one into service, we'll still have at least one pumper per station, and this would make two if we kept this one at one of the stations. Well, we have one pumper in every station, and we have one aerial that's a pumper. Right, so, so if we so kept we this as a reserve, so we have five. Have, so we have five. So this would be five keeping this as a reserve vehicle. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, no, sorry. We'd have six if we kept it as a reserve. We currently have five right now. So being we all help each other, do we need six pumpers? Uh, it's as my professional recommendation yeah right now we can keep this because things do happen as right now we are short because of a truck that's been out of service for two months and then we take another one out of service for training purposes we're down now to three trucks so i think there is value in it at this time at, this, ever time at this time is there ever time where certification meets the age uh, maximum on it that we wouldn't be able to get it certified or is, or is it depend on the vehicle as opposed to age there's a lot of factors and it's unfortunate uh, for a small municipality, you know, for a frontline truck in the city of Niagara Falls or the city of Thorold versus the city of Toronto, it's used a lot less. It's been maintained better here, but it, there is no... So a, technically this could be 50 years old and still be certified? Well, if, it, if it met the requirements, yeah. Right. There is, would have been the potential, yeah. Thank you. Councilor, you leave me. you, Mr. Mayor, to the fire chief. Well, the part that, the one thing that bothers me in all this is that Fire Station 3 has been over two months without a pumper truck. I don't know if you are aware, but they have had no pumper truck in Fire Station 3 for over two months, and that deeply disturbs me. Uh, and I know it disturbs a lot of people in Port Robinson. So that's something that we need to look at as part of this whole thing, if that might alleviate something. Because to me, um, that situation where we need that truck at Fire Station 1, fully understood, but it's been too long that they've been without a pumper truck up there. And I concur with you, it's uh, two months, and if we had had this truck in reserve status, we would not be in this situation. Councillor Pion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So after, I mean, hearing all this, and it comes down to how much do we want to spend. Uh, before tonight, I didn't have some figures that were provided in the report tonight, and the $1,200 uh, yearly inspection figure is another one. To me, it, it's, it comes down to how much we spend to have this extra unit. And if we can only sell it for at best 17500 and that might be an overestimate, and we're paying 1200 a year, 
Originally, I would have thought we don't need an extra reserve vehicle, but given that it comes down to what isn't that much money to have an extra pumper, then I'm willing to uh, keep it as, as a reserve vehicle. If we were talking about being able to get a lot more if we sell it, um, you know, or we've already bought the 1.3 million. Like I said, I wish we had discussed this along with that report where we talked about buying the 1.3 million. That way we discussed it all at once. But given that we've already bought the 1.3 million, we're not going to change our minds about that. For $18,700 $18, a year, we get to have a reserve pumper, and I think that's a bargain. So I, I'm in favor of keeping it on reserve. Councilor Longo. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to the fire chief. Um, chief, are you confident that this vehicle is safe to transport, uh, whether it's volunteer or full full-time firefighters, to the town of Fort Erie for training? At this time, 100%. In fact, I'll be riding in it on Saturday myself, personally. Okay. And I guess at the time it's unsafe, you'll come, you'll let council know and we'll dispose of it? 100%. It would be out of service immediately if there was that concern. And if there are any uh, substantial costs uh, required for maintenance, we'll be made aware of that? 100%, yes. Thank you. Are there any, any other speakers? Okay, I'm going to call a question on the report as written. All those in favor? Opposed? You do that again to take account. All those in favor? One, two, three, four. It's carried. Okay, that concludes everything. We have one, one, uh, one report, one in-camera report. And uh, I need a motion to go in-camera. Mover to go on camera, Councillor Ugolini. All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried. Or do we have to do bylaws first? Um, we can do them in there too. Usually we do them in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Usually do them.